Okay. 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 Mm -mm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it's so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word. Amen. Sister Himes, do we have a thought for today? Uh, yes. As we begin this new year, let us approach others with joyful attitudes and actions. Something as simple as letting someone get in line in front of you at the store or holding the door open, or phoning a friend can spread holiday cheer. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. May we bow in prayer. Lord, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for this year. We pray, Lord, your blessings upon everyone in our Bible study and those who are absent today. Now, Lord, as we meet in this time, may we experience your presence, your spirit leading us into truth. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay. Um, Want to ask a couple of questions. Uh, not necessarily questions for us to get answers to, but I just want to uh, lift up these sort of like as a topic. Is Jesus asking too much? Does he want everybody to get along? Our, our assigned reading on our study guide is Matthew. Uh, we have a little overlap, verses 10 through 32. And then we have, we, we want to jump ahead and get three verses in chapter 11. Uh, our, but our, all of our uh, questions. Uh, to prick our or provoke our thinking come from chapter five. First question in verse 12, Jesus says to be glad about something he says will happen. What did he say will happen? Verse 11. Uh, question number two, and this comes from verse 16, is the light for you or for others? Is the light for you or for others? And question number three, who does it sound like will not enter the kingdom? This comes from verse 20. Right from verse 20, who does it sound like will not enter the kingdom? Okay. Let's take a few minutes to work on our questions and then we'll share our work and begin our 
discussion today.
All right, are we about ready to share our, our work on these questions? Who, who, would, who would volunteer to share uh, your work on question number one? I will. All right. It says, and uh, Jesus says to be glad about something. He says, it will happen. What did he say will happen? He said, when people insult you and persecute you and tell all kinds of evil lies against you because you are his followers, for a great reward is kept in heaven for you. All right. Amen. Amen. Question number two. Thank you so much, Sister Wigfall, for that. Who, who will share your, your work with question number two? Well, it says that we are to shine our light before others so that they can see our good works and glorify our Father, which is in heaven. So the light that we shine is for others. Okay. All right. Did, did you or did anyone find uh, this surprise? Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. You all right. Question number three. Who will who will share your work with question number three? I will. Okay. Uh, what does it sound? Who does it sound like will not enter the kingdom? Mm -hmm. And based on the scripture, I said the unrighteous will not enter the kingdom. Okay. The unrighteous. Okay. What uh in, in that in that verse, verse 20, the does your translation have any any names? It says if your righteousness is not does not exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. So the okay. scribes and Pharisees will not enter the kingdom as well as the unrighteous. That's right. That's right. That's right. It sounds yeah, it, it it sort of sounds like uh the scribe, he's saying the scribes and Pharisees will not enter. Uh, okay, perhaps we will come back to that one uh in our discussion. Um now I tell you in when we in our reading today, um, we did, even if we did or did not get all the way to verses 11 and 12 last week, we did read them. So how about today, if we will start our reading at verse uh, 13. At verse 13. And uh, And I, what I'd like, I'd like if someone would volunteer to read from verse 13 to verse 20. I'll read. Okay. From the New Revised Standard Version. Mm -hmm. Verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand and give light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least to the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them 
he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. All right. All right. Now, that's a that that that's quite a quite a passage. Before we finish the assigned verses in chapter five, I'm going to ask us to do something out of order. I'm going to ask for a volunteer to turn to chapter eleven and read twenty eight through thirty. Come to, <clears throat> excuse me. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. Okay, let's come back to chapter five. <laughs> Okay. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> now, um, now, will someone start reading from 21 on down to uh, 32? This is from the good news. From the you have heard that people were told in the past, do not commit murder. Anyone who does will be brought to trial. But now I tell you, if you are angry with your brother, you will be brought to trial. If you call your brother, you good for nothing, you will be brought before the council. And if you call your brother a worthless fool, you will be in danger of going to the fire of hell. So if you are about to offer your gift to God at the altar and there you remember that your brother was something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. Go at once and make peace with your brother and then come back and offer your gift to God. If someone brings a lawsuit against you and takes you to court, sell the dispute while there is time before you get to court. Once you are there, you will be turned over to the judge who will hand you over to the police and you will be put in jail. There you will stay, I tell you, until you pay the last penny of your fine. You have heard that it was said, do not commit adultery. But now I tell you, anyone who looks at a woman and wants to possess her is guilty of committing adultery with her in the heart. So if your right eye causes you to sin, take it out and throw it away. Mm -hmm. It is much better for you to lose a part of your body than to have your whole body thrown into hell. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off, throw it away. It is much better for you to lose one of your limbs than to have your whole body go off to hell. It was also said, anyone who divorces his wife must give her a written notice of divorce. But now I tell you, if a man divorces his wife for any cause other than her unfaithfulness, then he is guilty of making her commit adultery if she marries again. And the man who marries her commits adultery also. Hmm. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, is Jesus asking too much? <laughs> He's asking a lot. <laughs> does he want everybody to get along? <laughs> yeah. He, he does. Uh -huh. All right. <laughs> now. Nah. Okay, let let let's back up to uh, the passage that starts with verse thirteen. And that's why you got so many people that get so literal about the Bible. Now, 
proceeding on here. Um, Perhaps, uh, if if we if we do not finish our assignment today, uh, let us hold one another accountable that we uh, start next week where we start. And uh, I'm going. I'm, I already have a notepad on which to note where we where we end today. <clears throat> okay, you are the salt of the earth. Now that's verse 13. Everybody's, whatever translation you have, you have that in some form, right? You, you are the salt of the earth. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And the salt of the earth is supposed to be salt. <laughs> The salt of the earth is supposed to be salt. If the salt of the earth stops being salt, you might as well throw it away. Okay. With verse 14, we're going, we're not, we're not leaving it, but we're kind of linking 13 and kind of linking salt and light together. You are the light of the world. Now, if the light doesn't do what light does. It's not light, is it? No. No. Uh -uh. Now, now, because whatever translation you have, when he's talking about light, he doesn't mean lamp. He means light. In, we kind of use, sometimes we use the same word. Sometimes when we say Light, we really mean that which gives light. But we say turn the light on. <laughs> <laughs> that I guess I guess that came with electricity. We kind of the words got jumbled up. Huh. But you are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world. As believers, we are to be believers. We are to have, we are to bear witness to that which we believe. And to tell the truth, if we really believe, our lives will bear witness. And sometimes we'll use words. There's just a difference in the way you treat people when you actually when you are a believer. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, there's a difference in, in the way you live. Um, there's even a difference. Remember the our study of the Beatitudes. The, there's so much in the Beatitudes. I guess if we studied it uh, for a year. We, we, we might get a lot, but we might not get all of it. <laughs> mm. But one of the things that the Beatitudes does, I think, now this is pedophore talking, one of the things that the Beatitudes and all of what we call the Sermon on the Mount does for us, it, it lets us see that God does not look at things the way the world does. Uh-uh. In general, the way the world, this is in general now, generally the world looks at things, the higher you are in society, in status, in power, in privilege, uh, on the economic totem pole, the better you are or the better off you are. As soon as we get into the Sermon on the Mount, we're not in the Sermon on the Mount very long but when Jesus is just turns a whole lot of notions upside down. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are they that mourn. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. This is different. This is different. Um, now, even here with salt and light. Salt 
is not um, salt is a small thing. You sprinkle a little salt on something, it will preserve food. Keep it even if when you they I don't know how if any of you uh, ever seen people salt down fresh meat. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. You seen that done? Uh-huh. Yeah, they 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 leave it outside, no refrigerator, and the salt mm -hmm. keeps it. Mm -hmm. Not outside, but they had uh, they had what they call them smoke houses. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a, a, a little building behind the house on the land where the meat would hang, uh, just salted. Um, salt keeps things. If we can't keep if we lose our saltiness, uh, if, if, if the light doesn't shine, the verse is about light. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. We've all been driving, I'm sure, at night on the country, in through the country, and you know you're approaching a town when you see a lot, whole lot of light off in the distance on those dark country roads. When you light a lamp, you don't hide. <laughs> you don't hide the light. You let the light be seen. We should not, our lights should not be hid either. Uh, any comment or question either about salt or light? Okay. And, uh, all right. If now, if if not, let's let let's go to this this what I let's call it a paragraph seventeen through twenty. Uh, what Jesus says about the law. Now this is this passage. These verses are very uh, important in chapter five because after twenty, Jesus is going to say a series of things where. Uh, he discusses something that's been said in the law or something that was taken from the law and traditions, uh, religious tradition were built around it or built out of it. Teachings came from it. Uh, but Jesus lets his followers, his disciples and us know, I have not come to do away with the law, but to fulfill the law. Uh, verse 18. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Now, for me, this is one of the very challenging verses that we hear in Jesus, hear from Jesus. None of the law will pass away until all is accomplished. Hmm, the law is accomplished. Now, uh, brothers and sisters, I would assert that the law is not just given to us for us to keep the law, but the law is given to us for the law to do something in us and, and for us. I think the law is given to us to help us become closer to God. to help us become closer to God. Now, um, we, we, we talk about the scribes and the Pharisees and the, and the scribes and Pharisees are mentioned down in chapter 20. In some places in the gospels, it's the Pharisees and the Sadducees or the, the priests and the, the scribes or the priests and the Levites, the religious folk. Uh, 
even in the Bible, sometimes the religious people, the so-called religious people don't look so good. <laughs> mm. The thing is, in almost anything, you can misuse it. Um, it's just like knives. What good, how much cooking can you do if you don't have any knives in your kitchen? Mm -hmm. Knives are almost essential for cooking. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to cut, cut the meat before you put it in the pan or the pot. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you don't, you might not fit. <laughs> After it, after the food is prepared, depending on what you have prepared, you, you need a knife to eat it. Uh -huh. um, but on the other hand, look at all the damage knives can do if they're misused. Right. Just like we can misuse, knives can be misused. And so many other things can be misused. Religion can be misused. The Bible can be misused. In verse 20, Jesus doesn't, doesn't make a case in verse 20, but he's kind of pointing at the fact, the way the scribes and Pharisees He's accusing the scribes and Pharisees of misusing the law. In other places, he says, they put a burden on the folk and don't even help the folk with the carry the burden. The per and then he goes on to talk about the deeper, what, now this is petty for talking, if, 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 yeah, I, I don't want to confuse anybody. And if along the way we need to stop and discuss something, let's let's do that. Just just speak up or or whatnot. I don't I can't see everybody on my screen, so you might just need to speak up. Okay. We have what Jesus is saying about the law will not will not go away. None of it will go away until all of it is accomplished. I assert that the law is given to us to bring us closer to God. Now, quickly, let's go to Paul right quick. <laughs> Paul says what the law could not do. I'm summarizing here, over summarizing perhaps, but uh, taking a chance. What the law does, cannot do, Christ did. <laughs> but Jesus is not, did not come to do away with the law. But if we, we had the law, mankind had the law, but somehow or another, the law was not bringing us back to God. Jesus comes to bring us back to God, which is what the law was given for. <laughs> so many things are given for that purpose. Uh, okay, this, I, I, now, starting with verse 21. Sister Winnipeg, did you, did, were you the one who read this passage starting with 21? Yes, uh-huh. Didn't you say you have heard it said more than one time? Correct. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Some of you will have it in paragraphs and you've already noticed it. Some of you may not have, have it in paragraphs, but if you look at verse 21, you have heard that it was said. Jump down to 27. You have heard that it was said. Yeah. Jump down to 31. It was also said. We're going to jump ahead a little bit. If you jump down to 33, again, you have heard that it was said. 
If you jump down to 38, you have heard that it was said. If you jump down to 43, you have heard that it was said. Okay, each time, each time that Jesus said, you have heard that it was said, then there is that conjunction, but I say to you. <laughs> He's not contradicting. He's not contradicting the law. He's not contradicting what had been taught and what had been said but he's going into the meaning and purpose of the saying. See, Jesus is teaching here, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, we, it's popular to call these three chapters, five, six, seven, and Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount, but it's really the teaching on the Mount or the teaching on the hill. It's really what he's doing. He's teaching more so than what we think of as preaching, what we generally think of as preaching. Uh, of course, sometimes if you do one, you do you do the other at the same time. Hmm. Reverend Pettiford. Yes, ma'am. Can we go back to verse 20? Yes, ma'am. And if you can clarify for me that last part of verse 20, where it says, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven is he talking about us as individuals? I think I think I think he's talking yes and and in general. Okay. And in general. Uh, uh, um, but I hear it personally. I hear it individually. Okay. Um and um, he said, and the, the verse itself says, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees. Mm -hmm. you, will, saying, you will. You will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Now. Uh, so that means us as individuals. Well, on that, on that, on the condition of the first part of the verse. Okay. On the condition of the first part of the verse. Okay. Now, what he's really saying, I dare say, I dare say that what Jesus is really saying is the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees does not lead one to God. Mm -hmm. That they are not leading you to God. They are misusing what God has given for other purposes, but that's not gonna lead you. That does not lead you to God. Now, if, if, we, we, if we back up all the way throughout these teachings of these three chapters, Jesus talks about righteousness in a different sense that public show of how good one is. Because we can have public shows of how good one is or how religious one is and God not be in it. Um, does that make any sense, uh, Sister Himes? Um, what Jesus is really doing there more, I think, in large part, he's condemning the Pharisees and the scribes. Um, that you see, there's a difference between what I call spirituality and what I call religion. I call spirituality the relationship between a person and God. Religion is more the organization 
a man. Now, religion is not bad in and of itself, but religion is, is a tool that can be used well or misused. What the scribes were supposed to do, what the Pharisees should have been doing, and what Jesus accuses them throughout his ministry of doing is not the same thing. You can use the Bible to, to defraud and fool somebody, or you can use the Bible to help somebody. Mm -hmm. Does that clear it up any? Mm -hmm. Well, it, um, I tell you what, how about if we back up to verse 19? And, and read 19 and 20 together. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You, you, you see where I say that Jesus is really condemning the scribes and Pharisees. And then he says, don't be like them. <laughs> mm. Don't be phony. <laughs> don't be all about the show. Um, oh. it, okay. it, it, it's it's kind of it's kind of all linked very closely together in these three chapters. It's, it, um, but let me say this Jesus is not saying we are not going to enter the kingdom of heaven <laughs> you remember remember we, we skipped ahead to chapter 11 verses 20 is it 28 through 30 uh huh yes one, one of our rhetorical question was, is Jesus asking too much? If it's too much, what does, 20, what does he, the same Jesus says in 28? On page, page four. Come to me. <laughs> come to me. You know, we sing that song, come to me, come unto Jesus. Come unto Jesus, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Mm -hmm. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's the same, it's the same Jesus talk. <laughs> it's the same Jesus talk. Reverend Paterford. Yes, ma'am. I just think that it depends on where you are in your walk with the Lord on how, whether or not you think Jesus is asking too much because when he keeps repeating, you've heard, he's he's basically just telling us um, to just fo keep following the commandments and he just elaborates a little bit on what that may mean in your life. Ah, uh, what it really means, that's right. What it really means, and not just the show, not just looking like, uh, you know, um, that that that's a very that's a very very helpful viewpoint, uh, Sister Tatum. It's a very helpful viewpoint. Um, Very helpful viewpoint.
And if, if someone, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, finds it difficult to do more than they can do, we don't forget what we find in verse in chapter 11. Jesus says, come unto me mm -hmm. and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You will find rest for your souls. Now, uh, uh, verses 21 through 26, y'all, um, Uh, you, it, it helps me to use my imagination and imagine bringing a gift to the altar, the, a physical altar in a temple, and, and, and getting right there at the altar and remembering that somebody has something against me. I did somebody wrong. <laughs> I did somebody wrong. Jesus saying, rather than making the giving the gift at the altar, don't even kneel down in prayer. Turn around and go to your brother or your sister and get right with them first. Then come back to the altar. Then come back to the altar. That that that's more important. He. Uh, But now, if you're at the altar, you, you look like you're doing the religious thing. Uh -huh. When you go to your brother and your sister, except for your brother and sister, nobody knows about that. And this is where some of the Beatitudes come, become so helpful. The one who has no meekness, who has no poorness in spirit, who, 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 whose heart is not pure, but who's trying to look religious, it's, going, it's hard for them to go to somebody and apologize and make something right uh, when someone feels wrong. And sometimes somebody can have something against you and you really did not do anything wrong. But uh, in as much as possible, we want to get that straight either as, as, as well, in as much as possible. And now, um, I rest heavy on what Jesus said in chapter 11. If I can't get right with my brother and my sister, I I still want to go to Jesus. Because <laughs> Jesus doesn't say get right with him before you come to me. He says, come to me. Come to me. And after we come to Jesus, we, we, he still has his word for us. We do it in as much as possible. And then we come to Jesus as well. Does, does that make any sense, y'all? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. All right. Now, I, I wanted to say something about, I think it's 25 and 26. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you're on your way to court with him. This is, this is wise counsel. You, in legal terms, you, we call this negotiating and settling before going to court. <laughs> Uh, sometimes it's a whole lot better if somebody dents your fender and nobody got hurt, but they just dented your fender. If the two of you can work it out together rather than going through the court system and the insurance agents and all of that, if, if they can satisfy you 
that they will stand good to fix your car. That's a whole lot better for them and for you. Uh, uh, the, the court is there when people can't get along. We ask the question, does Jesus want everybody to get along? Paul picks it up in Romans, in as much as possible, uh, live at peace with all. <clears throat> okay. Rep. Ted Porter. Yes, sir. In the Printed Baptist Church, I used to see my father now. If if uh, somebody felt necessary to carry somebody to court, mm -hmm. the Printed Baptist said, wait a minute, you can't be a part of our fellowship. Mm. You got to work it out here. Wow. Mm. If you got to go to court, just just stay in court. If that's where you're going to sell your organize. Wow. Mm. Wow. That's mm. deep. Uh, that's, rich. that's rich. That's rich. Mm -hmm. One of the experiences mm -hmm. uh, we had on the trip to, to Ghana, uh, Professor took us um, to several places and we had worship at several different places. Uh, one, of, one Sunday, we had gone to a Baptist church earlier that Sunday. And that afternoon we went to, we, we worshiped at, with two different traditional African religions priests. One of them was at the creek baptizing. People would bring gifts, uh, whether it was to the priest or to the religious body or whatnot, I, I couldn't always tell, but they would bring gifts and they would say something and the priest would baptize. One man brought a gift the priest looked at it and sent him away. He wouldn't baptize him. Sent him away. The man went away in tears. There was a guy there who translated for us and said, the priest sent him away because he had done his wife wrong. And the priest said, until you get right with your wife. Mm. You don't come back. <laughs> oh, wow. When, when you do that, then you can come back. Well, well this is what the friend of did. It, 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 that was a holy moment when they, when they got, when he translated that for us. Mm. I said, I've seen it with my own eyes. Yes. <laughs> well, well, well as, as a youngster, I used to see the deacons, if if somebody had brought a charge up against a, a member of the church, they wouldn't hold church until they went on the side of the church and sell that thing. Wow. You weren't going to bring no mess inside the church. Wow. And yeah. uh, as, as a youngster, I used to sit there and tell my father, you can't tell a man what to do, but they said, well, we can't tell him what to do, but if he's going to stay in, in this fellowship, he had to go by the rules. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. Um, mm. Let's stop mm. there for this week and, and, and pick up next week with verse 27. Um, now, we, we noticed already, I think we noticed already that there's a pattern here with each of these in, in many Bibles, they're in paragraphs. 21 starts a paragraph, 27 starts a paragraph, 31 starts a paragraph, 33 starts a paragraph, and on, uh, well, that's past our sign reading, even 38 starts a paragraph and 43 starts a paragraph. And each paragraph has the similar pattern. Jesus says, you have, you have been taught such and such, but I say, 
When Jesus says, but he does not contradict what they had been taught, but he, bring, he sheds more light on it and what the purpose of the teaching is. God doesn't just lay out the law as rules for us to follow and the rules have no bearing to our spirituality, our spiritual relationship with him and with one another and in life. Um, and to add another element, Jesus brings wisdom to the law. Um, now, the, to use uh, uh, something I, somebody said about in, where we are in our walk with the Lord, at different times in my life, some of these I could see more clearly than others. Not that I thought any of them were wrong, but some of them I just couldn't see very far into. But at different times in my life, some of these I could see more clearly than, than others. This one we just, just finished with 21 through, just discussed 21 through 26. If your brother or your sister has something against you, uh, and I could not help but think about that man at the creek and the priest turned him away. Imagine what it would be like to be sitting beside somebody in church. And whether it was you or the other person, one of you had done the other one wrong. And it's time to pray. <laughs> <laughs> How close an experience with God, or well, you will have an experience with God, but what kind of experience do you have with God during prayer time? When you bow your head to pray. <laughs> it, it, there, it just affects us. What we do in life affects our religion. Uh, one of the mistakes so many people make is trying to have religion make up for their life. Church don't make up for your life. Church can help you with life, but it don't make up for your life. Um, which is, I think, uh, Bro Fulton, I see wisdom in, in, in what the primitive Baptists were doing. I don't think I could do it. <laughs> But I, I do see the wisdom in it. I do see the wisdom in it. Um, I, I do see the wisdom in it. Um, it's, it's sometimes hard to sit in church for an hour, hour and a half, or two hours, thinking the whole time, as soon as I get out of here, I need to go to so-and-so and beg their pardon. <laughs> no, matter, no matter what's said, no matter what song they sing, if that when that comes on your mind, guess what? All you gonna hear. The ch church might just be saying, "Yeah, yeah," and all you thinking, "I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go." <laughs> all right. With our, let's pick up with uh, twenty seven next time. We have a couple of prayer concerns that we want to share, Sister Tatum. When is your when is your surgery this month? It's on the twentieth. It's on the twentieth. Mm -hmm. Okay, we will be remembering you in prayer. Thank but you. Sister Geneva Herbert lost her sister. We mentioned uh, her sister being ill, uh, but her sister Susie Johnson passed. And the funeral will be in Orangeburg, South Carolina on Saturday. We want to remember her in prayer. Um, and there, um, Was there someone who was supposed to have knee surgery this week? That was 
David Eldridge, he was scheduled for yesterday. Uh, I'm going to try to catch up with him right after Bible study. David Eldridge Jr., he was scheduled for yesterday. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Les, Brother Eldridge. Thank you. Are there any other prayer concerns? We continue to pray for Sister Bennett, who's having blood pressure issues. Uh, you mentioned to, to Mika Pompey. Yes, you mentioned that's, her. That's right. Uh, to Mika. I think her name is Bridges now. I think it's Harley, isn't it? Harley? It's, like Harley. it's, it's Harley. Where did I get Bridges from? Harley. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I continually ask for prayer for my brother David. Oh, yes. All right. Deacon, would you close us out in prayer today? Let us pray. All eyes and merciful, kind Heavenly Father, we come together in your name on this Wednesday afternoon, the first Wednesday in the new year. Thanking you for this opportunity you granted us to come and study your word. Then, Father, we thank you for watching over each of us last night and waking us up early this morning and starting us on our way. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this branch of Zion called First Baptist that's been here for 143 years, dear God. Praise him, Father, that we continue to serve you, this community, this nation, and this world. Heavenly Father, you heard several names called out today. Those that are sick, a person having surgery, dear Heavenly Father, just ask your blessing upon each of them. Touch their bodies in a special way only as you can. Your great Heavenly Father, just for those that's going to be having surgery, just ask you to study the doctor's hands as they're making decisions. The Heavenly Father, for those who undergo, who's going through bereavement, dear God, just ask that you touch those families in a special way, undergird their life, dear God, in a special way. Extend your kindness and your love to them. Heavenly Father, just ask that you continue. Thank you for this Bible lesson today, dear God. Help us, dear God, to continue to study your word and get deeper into your meaning and what it is meaning to be righteous. Help us, dear God, to be more like you each and every day. Dear Heavenly Father, as we leave this session, we ask that you not to leave your presence and to be with us tonight in our regular night service. These are the blessings we ask in your son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Stay dry, everybody. All right. Have a good day. Have a good day.